today we're going to start pimping our Atari ST that we installed and configured in the last episode of this series. That video was called Supercharging Your Atari ST and we concentrated on core system components like VDI, GDOS, multitasking and adding a better desktop. In this video, we're going to extend that system to add some productivity features, quality of life improvements, and add some structure to our file system. As ever, links to everything I can think of in the description below, including the previous video in this series, just in case you want to catch up. But do come back. At the moment, the root of our C drive is getting quite cluttered. And as we add more features to the system, things are going to get worse. So I want to add some structure to our drives and move some things around. Before we can do that, I'm going to install a text editor so that we can edit config files. And the editor I use is called QED. For me, it's the best programmer's editor on the ST. It's free, open source, and hosted on Git. We're going to have to create somewhere for our editor to live. So I'm going to create a bin folder in the root. And under that, I'm going to create a gem folder where we're going to store our gem apps. It's not a trick name. So for convenience, I actually have the QED app and some others on my GemDOS D drive. So we're just going to drag and drop them across to install them. And the other utilities are just things that might prove useful later in this series. And I'm going to speed this up a bit. OK, so once we've covered our files across, I'm dragging the QED app onto my desktop for easy access later. And remembering, as always, to save the configuration or that file will not be on your desktop the next time you reboot. Right, time to clean up all of our accessory files. So we're going to move them from the C drive and put them elsewhere. So I'm going to create a ACK folder under our bin subfolder. Just select all of the accessories and their associated resources. And yes, I do miss one. I will notice eventually, I'm sure. And I move them into the ACK folder. Then I realize I've made a mistake and I copy the missing accessory instead of moving it, which is something else I'll probably get around to noticing eventually. Now we need to tell Geneva where to look for accessories at boot time. I'm going to drag Geneva's configuration file gem.cnf to the QED editor and up it pops. Ignore the clipboard error. It's a known issue in the latest build and I'm certain it'll be addressed soon. So it pops the file to edit. We need to specify where to look for accessories and that's done via the ACK path environment variable. And we just set that to be our ACK folder. That's a lot of ACKs in one sentence. I apologize for that. So after a quick reboot, we can see that our accessories are still working but now they're resident on disk in the new location. Now the extended control panel is still working, which is nice, but the CPX files are also still in the root of the C drive and this offends my eyes. So let's move them into the bin folder too. Finally, back in the control panel, we adjust the settings to tell X control the new location of the CPX folder. We reload them and a quick reboot later, everything is working. The final bit of restructuring is that I want to move my Gemsys folder into bin. The Gemsys folder, if you remember, is where we saw our device drivers and fonts for GDOS. But in this case, I'm going to copy them, reconfigure the system, and then delete the originals. I really don't know how Speedo GDOS would cope with having the rug swept from under its feet, metaphorically. So we'll do this safety first. And again, as usual, I will speed this up. There are two files that I'll need to edit to let speed or GDOS know where to look. So first of all, we're going to change assign.sys and set the new path. Then do the same thing in extend.sys. Finally, I clean up the backup files, pop in a reboot, and delete my old copy of Gemsys. Then we add one more reboot. And there we are. We started with 16 items in the root of our C drive, and now we only have eight, which is good. There are a couple of items on the Geneva Extras disc that are really nice little quality of life improvements. So let's start with the Geneva file viewer. If we navigate to the file folder for the file viewer and open the readme, you can kind of see the problem that we're going to be fixing here. The text of the readme is full screen and not at all harmonious with our brave new multitasking world. We want that content in a window. I'm going to drag and drop the three application files from the Extras disc into my Geneva folder. Now we need to tell NeoDesk to use that as the viewer for X files. We go to settings, paths in the NeoDesk menu. We enter the path to the viewer under the alternate file viewer setting. So now when I open the extend.sys files, 
it shows in the Geneva File Viewer. Now you can choose to display the file in a smaller font if more text on the screen is your thing. And remember, I'm not showing it here in the video, but again, save your configuration or you'll lose your changes after a reboot. The other item from the Geneva Extras disk that I want to install is Geneva's own custom font. And I think you'll see why when it's completed. Installation simple. Open the font folder on the Geneva floppy. And I'm just opening the install instructions for edit because we're actually going to want to copy and paste some lines out of it. I'm going to open the gem sys folder because that's where I want to drag the fonts to from the A drive. And notice how I use NeoDesk's handy little cycle windows button to get to the hidden A drive. It's a really nice little feature. For copying the files into the gem sys folder, it's time to update the assign.sys file to get it to load the new font. I copy the required lines from the install instructions and paste it into all of the resolutions. I mean, I could have just set the 4P section, really, because that's all I ever use is high res day to day, but never mind. So once the font is installed, we'll pop in a little cheeky reboot. And then post reboot. I think you'll agree that the fonts given the UI a real lift, actually. The window decorations for up level, maximize and resize all make their functions more obvious. The bold text on drives and files makes pertinent data stand out. All in all, I think that's a really great uplift from just adding a font. I think this looks super. The best, most productive tool that you could install, well, as a developer at least, is a command line interface, a CLI. I mean, in fact, I hold it a basic human right to have one available to you at all times. I mentioned in a previous video that the developer of NeoDesk and Geneva had released both them and the CLI for free, but that I couldn't find the CLI on the site. Then <clears throat> uh, I opened the NeoDesk floppy disk and there on the root of the floppy disk was a folder called CLI. I mean, really, how was I expected to guess what that contains? I'm going to copy that folder from the installed disk to our gem folder. And now we have a big decision to make. The CLI can run either as a desktop accessory or as an application. Both approaches have benefits and drawbacks. The running the CLI as an accessory means that it's instantly available and it remembers its command history and uh, window content between activations. But that comes at the cost of using more memory when it's not needed. Running the CLI as an application has the advantages that you can run multiple CLI windows simultaneously, but it has the downside of longer load times and it does not remember history between executions. However, I prefer to run it as an application and that's what I'm going to show here. To do this, we rename the accessory file with an NPG extension. This extension is specific to NeoDesk and it lets it know that the app is a NeoDesk specific app and will communicate with it. Okay, we run the renamed app and it opens in a window. I'm going to use the font command to set a smaller font. Now the CLR comes with both DOS-like and Unix-like commands. Here I'm using ls to get a list of files. The help command will give you an overview of all available commands, and there are quite a few of them, including file commands, scripting commands, logical and mathematical operators, file redirection, and functions. It's pretty much, or it is, a fully functional programming environment. Now, if you want help on a specific command, simply type help followed by the command name, and you get very basic help. But as you can see, the CLI's use of flags is very different to DOS, where you would have a forward slash, or Unix, where you'd have a minus sign in front of it. And it actually puts the flag, if you like, after it. So W plus. It's just different. Now, the CLI comes with several example batch scripts. And if you want to be able to run them or your own batch files from a double click, we need to tell NeoDesk where the CLI is installed. To do this, we go to Settings paths and set the batch file interpreter path to our CLI app. Close the settings and as ever, if you don't save your configuration, you'll lose it at the next reboot. I'm going to close the existing window that I've got open and I'm going to show you kind of off screen that here I'm pressing control B and a new CLI window opens. A nice little productivity boost in and of itself. So for a little bit further down this section, I'm creating a folder under bin called CMD. And if you notice, I do that on the CLI and it actually reflects it in the gem window, which is very nice. And then I'm going to just drag and drop VI into it. I mean, I could have done this via the CLI too, but hey, I didn't think of that. Now back to batch files. So what I'm going to do to show the power of CLI batch files, I'm going to run the settings batch file. So here I'm going to select a configuration. So I'm setting the font to small. 
I'm changing the command prompt from just being the drive and the path to being the drive, the path and a greater than symbol at the end of it, just to show that changes have been made. And then I'm going to add our new command folder that we've just created with VI in it to the end of the path environment variable. And the path environment variable is where the CLI looks for applications when you type their names. Now at the end, notice that when it prompts to save your settings, it does it in a gem style pop-up file explorer. And this is a very powerful feature of the CLI is that you can use these windowing components from within them. It defaults you to saving this as neoauto.bat in the root of the C drive. So I'm just in the window that I ran this batch file from. I run the set command to dump the environment and you can see that the new path is actually set. Back in a, a command line, we type VI and it finds it in the command folder and that's not the current folder. So path working. Very good. Now, the big issue here, when we run the CLI the next time after a reboot, we have to manually run a Neo Auto to load our environment. Now I use the CLI exhaustively back in my day, and I'm certain you could configure it to load that file automatically, but I tried for days, and I really do mean days, to get it to work. And and I just couldn't. I moved the file around the file system, tried different names. I ran the string command on the executable to see if there was any environment variable names in there, and I just could not get it to work. And I can't find the manual for the CLI anywhere on the internet. And I was tearing my hair out in the end, and that's something I can really ill afford. But all I can do is ask for help. If anybody watching this video has a copy of that manual, please help me out in the comments. OK, so what have we achieved here? We've tidied up and decluttered our file system, installed a better file viewer. We've got a nicer look and feel through our new font, and we've installed a CLI to get us productive. All in all, not a bad achievement. Next time, we're going to double down on quality of life and look at installing a boot manager. However, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.